Hey everyone, it's Dr. Matthew Herman. I'm an infectious disease specialist and primary care provider, and welcome to LA. Come on in and ask me anything about Cabanuva. Follow me. Cabanuva is for virologically suppressed adults and adolescents with HIV-1 who meet certain requirements. See full indication on screen. It is contraindicated in patients with a previous hypersensitivity reaction to cabotegavir or ropivirine and in patients receiving the medications listed here. Please watch the entire video for additional important safety information. Please click the link to view the prescribing information for Cabanuva. Now let's get started. What was your first impression of Cabanuva's data? Comprehensive. There's been multiple randomized controlled clinical trials assessing the efficacy and safety of Cabanuva. Atlas and Flair laid the foundation, and this was followed by Atlas 2M, Solar, and then we had observational trials, Opera and Beyond. And that provides myself and other providers that this every two month injection is just as effective as oral medication. Let's move on to the next question. How effective is Cabanuva? The SOLAR trial was a dedicated trial comparing Cabanuva every two months to taking daily oral Bictarvi. This was a head-to-head non-inferiority trial assessing the safety and efficacy of Cabanuva compared to Bictarvi. Who was included? To be included, you need to be virologically suppressed on Bictarvi. Participants were then randomized in a two-to-one fashion to be either be switched to Cabanuva every two months or to be continued on Bictarvi. So two-thirds were on Cabanuva and one-third on Bictarvi. Solar enrolled a broad range of patients as seen here on screen. The patients were followed over time and assessed at 12 months. The primary endpoint was the proportion of participants who had greater than or equal to 50 copies per mil of HIV RNA at month 12. What we learned was that Cabanuva every two months was non-inferior to Bictarvi one tab once a day. Confirmed virologic failure was defined as two consecutive HIV-1 RNA levels that were at least 200 copies per milliliter. 0.4% or two participants met CBF in the Cabanuva arm. Both patients who met CBF were resuppressed on alternative, highly suppressive antiretroviral therapies. Not only did the SOLAR trial demonstrate that Cabanuva every two months was non-inferior to Bictarvi, it also provided us with safety data. Injection site reaction was the most common adverse event with Cabanuva. Injection reaction included pain, soreness, swelling and duration, redness. About 70% of the patients did have injection site reaction with average duration about three days. However, a small percentage of these discontinued the medication due to injection site reaction. The majority of adverse events were mild to moderate or grades one to two. So that was reassuring that there's no new signal in regards to safety with Cabanuva. Let's see what's next. What has real-world evidence shown you about Cabanuva? Having real-world data that supports and complements controlled clinical trials allows me to confidently prescribe Cabanuva in the patients that I take care of every day. Now let's talk about the OPER study. So the OPER study was a real-world study that observed adult participants who switched to Cabanuva or a new oral HIV regimen. Electronic health records were assessed to look at demographics, biologic outcomes, including confirmed biologic failure, as well as adherence to appointments. Overall, rates of virologic suppression in those receiving Cabanuva were about 95%, and rates of virologic suppression in those switched to a new oral HIV regimen were about 91%. There was no difference between treatment arms in the rate of meeting the definition of CVF. In those with confirmed virologic failure in Cabanuva, they were resuppressed on NC regimen. Please note that real-world studies are designed to evaluate associations among variables and not to definitively establish causality. The results are descriptive. So let's move on to the final question. What does Cabanuva mean to you in your practice? Cabanuva has meant that for the first time since people's diagnosis, we have got them off their daily oral medication. 
Cabinuva has impacted the patients I take care of in ways I really didn't think I would be able to witness. Thank you for joining me and don't forget to check out other Ask Me Anything videos about Cabinuva. Wordings and precautions. Hypersensitivity reactions, serious or severe hypersensitivity reactions, including stevens Johnson syndrome, toxic epidermal necrolysis, and drug reaction with eosinophilia and systemic symptoms, or DRESS, have been reported with Cabinuva or its components. Some skin reactions were accompanied by symptoms such as fever. Other skin reactions were associated with organ dysfunctions. Oral lead-in may be administered prior to administration of Cabinuva to help identify patients who may be at risk for a hypersensitivity reaction. If a hypersensitivity reaction is suspected, Cabinuva should be discontinued immediately and the patient should be monitored. Post-injection reactions. In clinical trials, serious post-injection reactions, such as those shown here, were reported in less than 1% of subjects within minutes after the injection of ropivirine. These events may have been a result of accidental IV administration and began to resolve within a few minutes after the injection. It is important to carefully follow the instructions for use and observe patients for approximately 10 minutes after the injection. If a post-injection reaction occurs, monitor and treat as clinically indicated. Hepatotoxicity. Hepatic adverse events have been reported in patients receiving capitegavir or ropivirine with or without pre-existing hepatic disease or identifiable risk factors. Patients with underlying liver disease prior to treatment may be at increased risk with Gabinuva. Hepatic monitoring is recommended and discontinue if hepatotoxicity is suspected. Depressive disorders. Depressive disorders have been reported with Gabinuva or the individual components. Promptly evaluate patients with depressive symptoms. Risk of adverse reactions or loss of virologic response due to drug interactions. Adverse reactions or loss of virologic response due to drug interactions with concomitant use of Cabinuva may occur. Use with caution in combination with drugs with a known risk of Trossard Diplar. Long-acting properties and potential associated risks with Cabinuva. Residual Cabotegavir and Ropivirine concentrations may remain in the systemic circulation for up to 12 months or longer. Not adherence to injections could lead to loss of neurologic response and development of resistance. It is important to initiate a fully suppressive regimen no later than one month after the final injection doses of Cabinuva when dosed once monthly, and no later than two months after the final injections of Cabinuva when dosed every two months. If virologic failure is suspected, switch the patient to an alternative regimen as soon as possible. Adverse reactions. The most common adverse drug reactions were injection site reactions, pyrexia, fatigue, headache, and those listed here. Drug interactions. For important drug interaction information, we refer to the full prescribing information for Cabinuva, Flocabria for oral Cabotegavir, and Adurin for oral Ropivirine. It is not recommended to co-administer Cabinuva with other antiretrovirals. Drugs that are strong inducers of UGT1A1 or UGT1A9 are expected to decrease the plasma concentrations of Cabotegavir. Drugs that induce or inhibit CYP3A may affect the plasma concentrations of Ropivirine. Use in specific populations. Assess the potential risks of using Cabinuva during conception, pregnancy, and while breastfeeding. Please click the link to view the full prescribing information for Cabinuva.